right? We are not connected. So uh, uh, seriously, there is a major challenge. My vision, before I even begin this TED talk, is to connect with the 600 million youth of our country and to tell them, you have it in you. Believe in yourself. That everything that we fail to do is only because we lack self-belief. We don't believe in ourselves. Then I can do it. Somewhere there is this iota of doubt. And he starts, you know, man, Dikana <laughs> can. And then you know, you know, we are friends, we need to help, you know, collaboration. Right? All these words have come up from there. And what happens? You really are not sure of where you stand. Because the numbers when they come, they are not the true picture of what you are or for your effort and therefore you are not ever very sure and therefore any number of stories are there which, which, which reflect this in a, a very point which we can change and believe me you are the change we have lived our life 2050 Goldman Sachs says will be there I will be looking from top you are the ones who will take it there right please make a change and let me share with you a are, is this visible to you? Right? Uh, let me share with you what are the soldier's dreams? A perspective from the soldier. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this TED. I'm thankful to the organizers for organizing such a wonderful event. Right. So tell me what the soldiers dream of. What do they dream of? Most of you would have heard Alfred Tennyson when he said, cannons to the right of them, cannons to the left of them, cannons in front of them. Worried and thunder, showered at with shot and shell, rode to the valley of hell, into the jaws of death, into the mouth of hell, rode the 600. This was the charge of the light brigade in the Crimean War. Come back to 300. Remember? And you had the Battle of Thermopylae. No surrender, no retreat. This is Spartan law. As for Spartan law, we fight and we die. <laughs> that, that was King Jarvis, responsible for his 300 men, strong men, facing the 1 million strong army of God King Xerxes on the battle in the shores of uh, Greece in 480 BC. Right. UNESCO recognizes two last greatest battles. One was the Battle of Thermopylae, captured in the movie 300. And the second one was the Battle of Saragari. Saragari is a small town in the border district of Pakistan in Poha, present in on the Samana Range. After the siege of Kalaman, the British were unable to control this area of this tribal area, the Pashtuns, the Orkazais, the Afridis. And they decided in the Pira campaign of 1897 and 1898 to occupy a series of forts which were initially built by Maharaja Ranjit Singh, the Sikh ruler. They decided, therefore what happens? This was Saragiri, this was Gulistan, Fort Gulistan was on the Samana range, Fort Lokhar on the Suleiman range. And to communicate in between these two ranges, they created a fort Saragiri. Saragiri was a, it was a communication fort so that they could connect and speak to these two forts. Saragiri, was a small little fort with ramparts and loopholes to fire from, a small rock house so that they could sleep, and a signaling tower. It was in a rocky outcrop so that they could see both these forts. This was Saragari. Right. 18, in the, uh, in some way, this was the rampart that you see, and this is the signaling tower. These were the years when the Pashtuns repeatedly attacked the Britishers. And what they did, in 1897, on April 20th, they raised 36 sick. It was raised by Colonel J. Cook. And in August of 1897, under Lieutenant Colonel John Hutton, they moved five companies to go and occupy these forts. <laughs> Throughout August, from August 11 to September 11, regularly the Pashtuns attacked these forts. But they were thwarted. They were thwarted. And on August 11, there was this column which from Fort Lockhart had gone to uh, Fort Gulistan. On its return, they sat at Fort Saragari. On 12th of August, 12th of September 1897, in Saragari, 
we have one NCO, our Dr. Isha says, and 20 other ranks, 1897. What happens? On September 12, 1897, this goes down as a folklore. Why? And this is the true account of what happened in the battle only because the signalman Gurmukh Singh could signal everything to Fort Lokar. And there, Colonel Hutton could see what was happening in front of Saragadi. He saw 10 standards there all surrounding Saragadi. Each standard depicted roughly 1,000 prize men. Have you seen Braveheart? You see those colors? Right? Similarly, those each prize men were carrying their colors and they could see. Havaldar Isha, they signaled to Fort Lokar. Main gate, enemy approaching, we need reinforcements. Fort Lokar says, sorry, no reinforcements. Hold on. Isha gets his men. Tells them, we have two options. One, withdraw to Fort Lokar. Two, stand here and fight. Each and every soldier said, we stand and Ishwar then takes decision. We'll stand, we'll fight, and we'll prevent the breach of our fort as long as we can. In a price, he gets them all together and he passes orders meant to abreast. The men in front are in the standing, standing position, kneeling position, the firing position that they take, and the men behind in the standing position. They were equipped with the Hen Martin Henry. Uh, Breach loading rifle. This was the standard British rifle that time. It had just replaced the Enfield rifles. This was far superior to the breech loading rifle that the prize men had. But the mere, mere superiority of rifles, I'm sure you'll understand, cannot match with the far disparity of this manpower. Mm -hmm. They had uh, uh, this rifle could uh, fire 10, 3 or 3 uh, rounds in a minute. Right. Uh, and each soldier had around 400 rounds. So you can um, um, imagine what is the kind of firepower we have now in this fort. The defense of this fort starts somewhere around 9 o'clock. 10,000 soldiers facing this 21, 6 gentlemen. They start their attack. This rifle has a range of 600 meters. How the Misha holds on fire? Hold, 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 hold. If you have seen Braveheart again, hold, hold. When they come to 250 meters, he lets go. Fire. In that barrage of fire, first they saw huge heap of these soldiers, this tribesmen go to ground. But there is relentless, relentless attack because 10,000 people, they keep advancing, keep advancing. They throw soldiers, uh, there is uh, ladders across this four ramparts and they keep pushing them and the fight is on and on and on. Roughly by around 12 o'clock, the fight is beaten back. They beat back the first assault and they take recharge, they regroup. The tribesmen regroup, they get time to regroup. These people, in the meantime, Jiva and Bhagwan are seriously injured. They bring back the dead body of the fight Bhagwan in the inner layer. And in the meantime, these tribesmen, uh, tribesmen pursued, decide, let us change our tactics of attack. Let us break ourselves into two groups, attack from the left, attack from the right. Isha sees this and says, Samne bada jawan bai, piche khara jawan bai, move. And all of a sudden you have these people facing the star. Fighting continues. By around 2 o'clock, there is a breach in the front wall. The Pashtuns pour in. By around 2.30, they have run out of their ambition. They are fighting with their kirpans and their pellets. Each soul. The last transmission Gurmukh makes to Fort Lokhart is everyone dead, I am going. His king would have killed 20 Pashtuns himself. And each time he killed a soldier, his pride shouted the battle cry of the saints. Bule Sonia Sonia each time you kill. This was because of the fact that 
Colonel Mahadan could see the entire battle in front of his eyes because he could see the whole group. And this was recorded in history. Unfortunately for the Pashtuns, the fall of Saragari did not help their further plans. They are planning that they will overrun this and, and go and attack Pulisman. But because of the brave actions of the Sikh soldiers, they were delayed. Pulisman was reinforced and they could not attack. When the relief party came they heard the next day, they found 500 dead bodies of these dragons. 500. 25 were just in that Simianita, next to the Simianita. That's, that's what they presume that this must have been Gurmukh who had killed them. In fact, they could not kill Gurmukh. They had to light, the, uh, light fire to the Simianita post to get him out. Just to give you an idea, the planning figures for assault is 1 is to 3. In mountains, it goes up to 1 is to 9. In Battle of Saragari, it was 1 is to 500. Each soldier, Lak Lak Sabha, you know this, how it is said, right? Every Sikh soldier was worth one and a half lakh to put them that way. Right. It went on and on. And the Battle of Saragari, when they came to know, the battle went on. They And when the British each 21 soldiers were given the Indian Order of Merit, the highest battle honor that time, equivalent to the Victoria Cross and the present day Parangi Chakra. Till date, this is the highest number of battle honors given for a single day of battle in across the world. Across the, world. the entire, entire British Parliament stood up in homage and cheered the Sikh soldiers and their actions, their brave actions. Right. Another day, World War I, Patchendale, the Corporal Campbell, ordering 10 men, and these are his orders. I will read it out to you because that it's illegible. Right. Special orders to section number one. This formation will be held here, this position will be held and the section will remain here until relieved. The enemy cannot be allowed to interfere with this program. If this section cannot remain here alive, it will remain here dead. But in any case, it will remain here. Right. Should any man through shell shock or any such force attempt to surrender, he will stay here dead. Should all guns be blown out, the section will be used 10 grenades and other such novelties. Physically, the position as stated will be held. When the people subsequently went down to Passion Day in the pillbox, 10 bodies were recorded. Each soldier at night. Right. Now you will wonder, how am I connecting 10 soldiers in Passion Day, 21 soldiers in, in, in Saragari, 300 soldiers in Thermopoly, 600 soldiers in the charge of the light brigade, various different time zones, different time frames, right? What connects these soldiers? What is their dream? What is their dream? Each soldier dreams of fighting, protecting and defending his motherland. That runs to our blood. That is the ethos. We work for Na Na Nishan. What is Nam? Nam is the name of a unit. We will die for a unit. Namak is the salt of my country. Namak Ayaman is Deshka. And Nishan is the colors, the standards, the unit flutters in battlefield. These three things urge me, charge me, and invigorate me to fight for my motherland, to fight for this country. Across time, space, any soldier you see, this is the ethos that is taught amongst the officers, men across the globe. Each time you process until you are sown by it. Right? And therefore I cannot but end to read the poem of Thomas Macaulay. And he said, To every man upon this earth, death cometh sooner or later. And how can a man die better than facing fearful odds for the ashes of his father? <laughs> <laughs>